Morning, everybody. Shall we stand together? Happy Easter. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. 
He is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. A very, very happy Easter and Pask Happus in Welsh, as Sarah taught me. We are going to continue to worship. Kids, we've got space down the front. Easter Bunny, I think, is going to emerge and dance with us as well. So if you want to come and dance, me and Sarah will be down the front. But let's give God all the glory that he deserves this morning. And so, Jesus, we thank you that we gather in this place along with Christians right across the globe, celebrating that you are alive. And we thank you that you're not only alive, seated at the right hand of the Father, but that you are with us here today by the power of your Spirit. And I pray that right now, as we gather together from the youngest to the oldest, that you are, would open our eyes afresh to see the risen Jesus and that we would receive the life, the resurrection life that he gives. Come and meet with us now as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Kids, come. We're going to worship.
everyone's hands together. We've got actions for your songs, okay? So I want to see your best effort, so I'm going to name and shame, okay? Here we are, people of faith. Some with smiles, others with fears at their face. Here we come, ready to bring who we are. God is good. God is good to us. All through time, every hour, every minute, God is good. God is good. of God, family joining together as one, here we come, ready to sing who you are, God is good, God is good to us, all through time, every hour, every minute, God is good, God thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the good news that we celebrate today. We thank you that you are the only one who has rose and conquered the grave. You are worthy of our praise. We all just sing, which just sing a simple chorus together. You might want to just raise your hands the picture in the Bible of how we declare that God is good, that God is worthy of our praise.
Thank you, team. We're just going to take some time to pray on this Easter morning. And I've got, what's your name? Maxon. Maxon. What's your name? Alice. Alice. Alice and Maxon are going to pray. And it is a bit scary when you're up here. So they're being very brave. So, Maxon, are you going to say something that you like to thank God for? Thank you, Jesus, which we celebrate this day for everything. Amen. Alice. Um, thank you, God, um, that, that, um, for our family and friends. Amen. And thank you, God, that you raised to life this morning and that we get to celebrate you. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Well, a big welcome again from us. Um, just to say, it is so exciting that we are literally kind of at capacity. So all of the kids, could I encourage you, come and sit at the front here with Sarah and the kids team. Or if you really, 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 really don't want to, then sit on your mum and dad's lap. Um, but come and sit down here at the front. If you've got a seat next to you, can you squish along and raise your hand? Because we've got people without seats. And let's just try and we'd love to get everybody seated. So there's a couple of seats around here. And there's some seats over here. Uh, that is... That is wonderful. Well, a huge, huge warm welcome to all of you this morning, but especially to any of those of you that are new or visiting and to those watching online as well. Um, if you are new and you're looking at how you can get connected, you will find on your seats some orange and green cards. Um, we'll also have a link tree going on later on on the screens that you can scan. And there's a connect stand downstairs in the cafe where you can meet a lovely member of our team that can get you signed up to all the bits and keep an eye on social media. And just to say, we would love to meet you. Do stay around if you haven't got an Easter lunch straight, you know, at the ready straight away. Stay around after the service for the cafe. We've got hot cross buns and nice treats downstairs. Uh, and we'd love to meet you personally. But we'd also, if you are new here, we would love to invite you for dinner. We've got a newcomer's meal that is coming up on um, Monday the, uh, the 8th of April. And uh, if you haven't been to a newcomer's meal before or if you've joined Hope Street in the last little while, do come along. Sign up on the website, hopestreet.church, and we would feed you well. But it's a chance just to hear a little bit of the story and vision of Hope Street and how you can get involved. We also want to tell you about Alpha. So take a look at this film. Easter's about chocolates, eggs, children, celebration. You know, it's good time, good vibes. I'm a, like a massive summer kind of person, so that's like the biggest exciting time. Yeah, I mean, Easter's just, it's just like a holiday from school. It's not, it doesn't mean anything else other than that. I mean, let's be real now, like the best thing about Easter is that month before you have Pancake Day. The cross, I think, means crucifixion. It doesn't mean anything to me. I, I, I'm not a Christian, so... It's a statement as well of someone who did something really radical. I think it means like a fresh start or like, you know, like kind of like a phoenix from the ashes or something like that. It's the hope of starting again, having a new leaf. Comeback of Jesus. Jesus came back. It's like a comeback, basically. <laughs> I believe in eternal life. I personally believe in reincarnation. Definitely, there has to be eternal life. Otherwise, why are we here? Eternal life? Oh, Jesus, that's miserable, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, eternal life doesn't really appeal to me. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, no, the egg. No, certainly the chicken. <laughs> no. Well, you need the egg to make the chicken. Egg. Gut reaction. <laughs> the chicken or the egg, neither. Wait. Either they both exist or they don't. is 
the place to bring all of your questions, including the chicken and the egg, uh, to. Um, I'm aware that in a room like this, there'll be all sorts of uh, opinions about God, about Jesus, about who he is. Maybe you've got questions. Maybe you're not sure. Maybe some of the things that are said today, you kind of go, oh, I'm not sure what I think about this. If that is you, Alpha is for you. We've got a next Alpha starting. It's a 10 week, um, 10 weeks of sessions, and it starts on 30th of April on Tuesday evening, where we feed people, we watch a short uh, film, and then we bring, um, gather around tables having a great time just to discuss and bring what you think uh, as we discuss um, uh, questions of life faith and meaning. If you would like to come, do sign up on our website uh, or on your seats. We've got these um, invitations for Alpha. Pick one of those up and sign up a little bit later, but we would love to see you there. This evening at the 6 p.m. service, we have got baptisms, so it will be a real celebration of Jesus coming back to life and dunking some of you wonderful people as you leave your old selves behind and rise again with Jesus in your lives. So yeah, that's tonight at the six. Do not miss it. We're going to take um, a break now. This is a chance to give to the life and work of Hope Street. If you would like to give this, if you're visiting here, this isn't for you. But if you would like to give, all the ways you can give will come up on the screen. And um, uh, I, I'm aware that people will give in a variety of different ways, but there'll be some baskets coming around if that is helpful to you. Feel free to pass them along. Um, if that's the case. But also take the opportunity just to turn to someone that you haven't met before and say a quick hello. And after that, Andy is going to be coming to speak to us. And you're, you guys are going to love it. There's something coming. Hit the music. Hello. I'm going to have to start using what I use at Hope Street Kids. <laughs> so I'm going to say, where are my hands? <laughs> my hands are on my head. They're on my shoulders. They're up in the air. Great. I've, all eyes are on me. That's wonderful. Um, so it wouldn't be a Hope Street family celebration without a game, because we love a game. 
And we know a few of you guys are a bit competitive, so we love to see it. But we've got a game for us this morning, but we've put an Easter twist on it. So it's basically like rock, paper, scissors. But this involves everyone to do actions. And I'm not a doctor, but you can't do actions or move without getting out of your seat. So I want everyone to stand up. You don't have if you're able, of course. And kids, if you want to come to the front for this part as well, you're more than welcome. So Kat is going to demonstrate our actions for us this morning. We've got three. So the first one is the ch chick. Yeah. The chick. Can we all do the chick? <laughs> there we go. The second one is the lamb. Wiggle your tails. And the third one is, and the third one is, of course, the Easter Bunny. So what is going to happen is Kat is going to turn around for us. And after three, two, one, she's going to do an action. But before Kat does the action, I want you to choose one of the three actions that you've just seen. And if Kat turns around and does the same action as you, so for example, the chick, if you've done the chick, you are out of the game. So you sit down. Does everyone understand? Can everyone give me a thumbs up if you understand? Great, we're going to try this. It's going to be great. And if you're not doing actions, we're watching you all. So there we go. Choose your action. Oh, three, two, one, cat. Oh! So if you were doing the Easter Bunny, you're going to sit down. Turn, cat's turning around again. If you're still stood up, choose your action. Three, two, one. Oh, if you were doing the lamb, I want you to sit down. Right, so the next one, choose your action. Three, two, one. Oh, if you were doing the chick. Well, well, we've still got a few left. So pick your action. Three, two. One. Oh, double bluff. This is incredible. Oh. Whoever is left, come down to the front because, woo. Come on, Naomi. Here. Oh, Jan. Yes. Let me this. Choose your action. Three, two, one. Oh. You've won the game. Thank you very much. Nice little tails going, I saw you. Uh, Marcus is going to come and join me. And we're going to be reading from, remind me what it is, it's John 20, verses 11 to 18. Over to you, mate. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? 
Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he has said these things to her. Fantastic. Well, if you've not met me before, my name is Andy, and together with Rachel, who you saw a minute ago, we lead the church here at Hope Street. And I'm really delighted to say Happy Easter. Jesus is risen. You know, I don't know what you have, um, uh, what, what kind of situation you're in at the moment, what circumstances you bring today, but this is a fact that Jesus rose from the dead, and because of that, we have hope. Let me just pray. Father, I thank you for Jesus. We thank you that, that you came and showed us what it is to be human. And Lord, that you rose from the dead. And that changed everything. And I pray right now, Jesus, that you would come and speak to us this morning as we look into your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, uh, I have got a few uh, props that I want some help with this morning. So I need some people with some good breath. Some good uh, lung capacity, because I want you to start blowing up some beach balls. So can I have some volunteers? Yeah, you're going to have to come down and get one. Fantastic. Great. Lawrence, I've got a special one for you. There you go. Hugh, you can take that one there. Fantastic. Now, they're going to be doing that while I do the, t- the rest of the talk, and we'll come back to that in the, at the end. Now, I want us to turn our minds back to Friday, to the events of Good Friday, that if you were here on Friday evening, we were, we were remembering. Um, but this moment, very different to the kind of the mood of, of Sunday, this moment where, where we are remembering Jesus dying on the cross. This mob that turned on Jesus, beaten, humiliated, condemned. In some ways, seeing that day the worst of humanity. Just this desire to kind of destroy and shame this person who had shown us what it is to live uh, truly, truly life in all its fullness. Left to die hanging on the cross. And that kind of violence not only... Um, took Jesus' life and his dignity. But for anybody that was there on that day, anyone that took part, those soldiers, the, the, the crowds, anyone that was just there to see that take place, it would have stolen something of their humanity too. And there's something about uh, hatred and violence um, that seems so final, seems so irredeemable, is, doesn't there? Like you might be in situations at the moment where you just think that death is all around me. What hope is there? But we see on the events of Easter Saturday, thank you so much. Um, I'll use that in a minute. Uh, we're going to come back to that in a minute. Uh, the events on Easter Saturday, that there's this moment where darkness covers the earth. There's an earthquake there's, um, there's people coming out of the tombs and this temple curtain torn into a deeper, more divine power at work that humanity cannot touch. You know, sometimes it can seem like death has the final word, but the message of Easter is that it doesn't. There's a deeper, more powerful word 
The word of God that, um, that spoke, created order into being that we hear about at the beginning of the Gospel of John. A word that was there in the beginning that spoke life out of nothing. What the Bible, uh, what theologians call ex nihilo. And then the word that was there in the garden when man and woman were walking with God, naked, with nothing to hide, no sense of shame. The word that was there when man and woman decided to, to, to want to become their own gods and sin and shame entered the story. And there's this picture of man and woman hiding from God behind a tree. And then this word came to earth, wrapped in human flesh, moving in amongst us in the person of Jesus. And then this word speaks life. On the cross, in the grave, spoke life to death, a resurrecting word. And here, in this passage that we've read today, this second garden that John undoubtedly uses to, to look back to the first garden, the Garden of Eden, where it all went wrong. But this moment where it begins, that begins to be reversed, where it begins to be redeemed. Mary Magdalene, someone whose life had a powerful encounter with Jesus, where in some ways her life was, uh, was a picture of this, having become so traumatized. It says that uh, she was one of a group of women who traveled with Jesus who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. And that out of her seven demons um, were, were cast out by Jesus. Her life was completely turned around and she became one of his followers. Jesus was her Lord. She was there at the cross. She was there um, when they took him down from the cross and they buried him. She was there all the way through. And now... In this garden, somehow she doesn't recognize the risen Jesus. It's a bit of a mystery why that was the case. Did he look different? Um, was, he bl was she blinded by the tears or the grief? Was he so far away that she just didn't see him? And that's why she confused him with a gardener. We don't know, but what we can say from that is that it's possible for Jesus to be present in the room like he is today and for us not to recognize him. He's here right now. But it all changes for her when she hears him speak this word. Because this word is a personal word. Jesus is a person and he's alive and he speaks her name, he speaks your name today. Have you ever had that experience where someone rings you and you haven't got their number saved on your phone and you answer and you say hi and they say, oh, hey. And then you suddenly trying to think, whose voice is this? Or maybe they just say their first name like, hey, it's Steve. And you think, goodness me, I live in Wrexham. There's 20 Steves I know around here. Sorry if you're called Steve. Um, <laughs> And you've got to let the conversation play out a little bit so you hear what they're going to talk to you about. And you can put it together in your mind or you recognize their voice after a few more sentences. But then the closest people to you, like I think of if Rachel rings me from another number, all she has to say is hello or hi Andy. And I know immediately who it is because I recognize her voice. And for Mary, having walked with Jesus... You know, Jesus says in John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice and they know it's me. And there's something in Jesus' words of tenderness, of affection, of, of joy, of kindness, of honor. That she just immediately knows who it is. And maybe you need to hear that afresh today or maybe for the first time that Jesus is here, the risen Jesus, and he is speaking your name today. Steve, Dave, Sharon, Andy, whoever it might be. And he knows us better than anybody else. 
It says in the Psalms that he knit us together in our mother's womb. He knows every word before it's even on our tongue, every thought of our hearts and minds. And the truth is that he, the one who knows us best, is the one who loves us most. He is for you today. Whatever you come here carrying, Jesus is for you. And we know that his resurrection changes everything. This is where I'm going to need the balls. Jesus is here and he's speaking your name. So what does the resurrection mean? Firstly, Jesus' appearances were not a permanent return but a stopping off on the way to the Father. Jesus says to Mary Magdalene, I'm going to my Father and your Father. Jesus didn't stay with those that he loved, the disciples. He arose into heaven. And because he's defeated death, he is the risen King. Here's one I prepared earlier. Jesus is Lord. Oh, yeah, we're just going to leave that there for the moment. Right, this is going to, I'm going to see if this works. <laughs> Secondly, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we are adopted sons and daughters of God in heaven. Adopted. Jesus. Jesus says, I'm going to my father and your father. Jesus is right now. At, oh, thank you so much. This is a good one. Right now at the right hand of the father. Interceding for each of us. Saying to his dad, hey, have you seen Joe? Have you seen Steve? Have you seen? Aren't they brilliant? God is for us and he, advance, he invites us into the dance of the Trinity. This d dance of the divinity, these three people in one in the Godhead. He invites us in. We are sons and daughters of God. We are adopted. And because Jesus speaks to each of us by name, we know that we are chosen. He loves us. Oops, there we go. Fourthly, by rising again, Jesus has defeated death and the power of hell. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54, death is swallowed up in victory. So I have eternal life. There we go. Next one. Fifth, uh, sorry, sixthly, because, because Jesus is alive. He is working in the world by the power of his spirit. I am a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Revelation 21 verse 4. Behold, I am making all things new. When we say yes to Jesus, we become a new creation and we are being made new by Jesus, by the power of his spirit. And because Jesus has defeated death, I can be free. Free from the contamination and the addiction of sin. 2 more. We know that because of the cross and resurrection, we are forgiven. And finally, whether in this world or the next, we know that we will have resurrected bodies and we will be healed. In the words of that famous hymn, we are ransomed, healed, 
restored, forgiven by Jesus' death and resurrection. And today we celebrate. And what we're going to do in just a moment is the band are going to come back up and we're going to use these beach balls to, um, to, as part of our celebration. And the reason I've written on them is that as one of them comes towards you, like you might, if you bop it or whatever it might be, like you know this is part of my identity. I am chosen, adopted, forgiven, healed, free. Redeemed, being made new. Like to Mary, Jesus, the living, risen King, is here today by his Spirit, calling each of us by name. Whatever your circumstances right now, we have hope because of the fact of the resurrection and the power of the Word who speaks our name, who speaks life to you today. Let me pray. Jesus, I thank you that you are here in the midst of us. And we invite you now just to come and meet with us afresh. Maybe just picture whatever situation in your life might seem hopeless at the moment. And we know, Jesus, that it's not the potential of our circumstances that give us hope, but the fact of your resurrection. And I pray, Lord, for fresh hope, for fresh um, revelation of who you are right now. That hope would rise in each of us, that joy would rise. We're going to get the band back up. And just as they're coming, if you are here this morning and you wouldn't call yourself a Christian, but you would like to say yes to Jesus, it's just a really short, simple prayer that you can pray along with me to invite this Jesus, this risen Jesus into your life today. Just goes, thank you, sorry, please. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have loved me from the beginning of time. Thank you that you died for me and that you rose again. I'm sorry where I have not uh, lived in the way that you might have me live. Where I've done less than what what I could have done, where I've been less than I could have been. And Lord Jesus, please come into my life today and live with me. Amen. If you've prayed that, we'd love to say hi to you. Um, we can also uh, give you some, some literature just, just that you might know a little bit more about the person of Jesus. There's uh, these little booklets called Why Jesus on the tables near the back, which I really encourage you to take on your way out. And we'd love to see you on Alpha this term also. But why don't we stand now and we are going to finish by celebrating through the medium of beach balls. So I'm going to throw some out in different directions. Yeah, there you go. Right, let's keep these balls up in the air. Oops. (laughs) No injuries, please.
As we go from this place, let's remember the reason for the season and the beach balls. Um, and we really encourage you to come tonight to the six because it's going to be a real celebration um, of all that resurrected life means for us. So we'd love to see you there this evening. And let's just be still as we go and we're going to pray a blessing on us. May the God of hope so fill me and fill us with joy and peace this Easter that we may overflow with hope by the power of his life forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those that you love now and forever. Amen. Amen. Guys, if anyone would like prayer, it might be that you've got something going, along, going on this coming week that you would like someone to stand with you and pray for you. It might be that you are sick and you would like someone to pray that God would come and heal you today. Then why don't you, as we continue to worship just a little bit longer, come forward and members of the team, uh, ministry team will be here just to pray for you. Otherwise, cafe will be open downstairs uh, the beach balls will stay in here and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day happy easter from us
be the shining light Breaking chains that were holding me You sent your son down and set me free Everything of his will will free I'm pressing on till I see your face I will live that you keep me And I won't stop till your kingdom come you higher, lift you higher, your love, your love, your love, never ending, oh, oh, you are alive in us, nothing can take your place, you are all we need, your love has set us Hi!